Life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hey, Spinner Rack Kids, this is Corey. And this is Marshall, and we're going to be talking about some comic booky stuff today. Specifically, we are going to have a little bit of a discussion about costumes and superheroes. This is something that's kind of been a big issue for me over the years. I had this question I used to ask people all the time. It was a very psychological question. If you were a superhero but have no superpowers, what is your costume? And it was basically the idea of seeing like how they solve the problems and where's their mentality at. Because a superhero's costume reveals so much more than just what they like. It reveals everything about them. So we're kind of going to go through some of our favorite costumes in superheroes, past and present, and what, what we've learned about them, why we like those costumes so much. So today, uh, I'm, we are actually doing two recordings in one day. So this is immediately after last week's recording. So I'm still drinking the same coffee as last week. Weird. But Corey, what are you drinking? I am drinking the Bai, that's B-A-I, Zambia Bing Cherry. Hmm. I uh, like and these because they... What does Zambia Bing taste like? Uh, it tastes like cherry. Mm. It's like a tart cherry. Um, I like these because they're either zero sugar or very low in sugar. This one has like one gram of sugar mm -hmm. in it, so very good. I've always been a fan of Bai. I started off doing vitamin water and, and moved my way to Bai because they got a little bit more sophisticated flavors and stuff like that, so... Oh, cool. Corey, what is your number five? My number five? Mm -hmm. Okay, my number five is Dr. Fate, specifically for Ooh. his helmet. If you don't know who Dr. Fate is, the person behind Dr. Fate was Kent Nelson, and he discovered a tomb of the wizard Naboo. This predates the prequels. And he was trained by him in the ways of sorcery in order to fight crime and the forces of evil. And he's also a founding member of the Justice Society of America, which predates the Justice League. I just dig his helmet. I think it's it's really cool. You should look it up if you get a chance. Look up his comics too because it's a really cool, more supernaturally based comic. What I've really liked about that helmet though is it does kind of suggest one big thing about the character of Dr. Fate. And that is Naboo has kind of taken over the person that is wearing the helmet. And the... The person is now owned basically by Dr. Fate to do all these things that need doing to keep the universe running. And the helmet completely erases any identity that that person has. You can't even see their eyes through that helmet. Right. So the helmet is their fate. Basically. Yeah, exactly. But also when you look at the color choices, color choice is very huge when we look at superheroes in general. And even though you have this identity erasure, gold is the main color that we see in Dr. Fate. Gold being this very high, rich regal. color. You, a very regal color, but it's also a color of heroism. Uh, we've associated with that since Arthurian times, really. Oh, even further back than that, the yeah. Greeks like the Golden Fleece. and Exactly. So, it, And that also is another connection to it. It is a Golden Fleece that it can pass down to another person. Right. Yeah. My number five is probably going to surprise Corey. This is the Batman Begins Batman costume. And I don't necessarily like it for its design as like visually, but I loved all the thought that they put into what is making it up. All these triweave Kevlars, you've got ceramic plates, you've got this cape. The cape was amazing that it was a memory fabric that would snap out into a hang glider. I, I don't exactly like the, the color choices. I don't exactly like how they laid everything else out. I think they probably could have made the design more dark gray to really make that bat symbol on his chest pop out a little bit more. Yeah. I like that they, like we talked about last time with Nolan, he really said it in a realistic mm -hmm. um, instance and that it makes sense that all this tech 
existed before Bruce Wayne becomes Batman, what would it be? And it's military base, which is, I thought that was a re- really nice touch mm-hmm. that Nolan did. Yeah, and also when you look at this suit, it does kind of harken back to the design of the original Batman film. Right. It, it has a lot of the similar colors in it, but it's also, it does away with probably the worst choice that I've ever seen yeah. in a Batman suit, and that is putting yellow into his bat symbol. Well, that re- that this leads into my number four, which is Batman. Just so you know, like Nolan actually asked if he could do away with the yellow in the costume, the yellow crest in the in the center of the chest, which is like a target, if you think about it. If Batman is essentially a ninja, why would he have something bright yellow mm-hmm. on, on his costume? My favorite iteration of the costume is, like Marshall said, the gray chest plate or whatever with the black bat. That's my favorite. If I, if I see other ones with the yellow, it's just not my favorite. And when I found out that Nolan actually made that distinction, I was like, yes, it's mm-hmm. my kind of guy because I feel the same way. Yeah, and when you look at the color choices that they have for Batman, this this really does try and tell you a lot about his mentality. He deals very heavily in low saturation colors with one high contrast very rarely. So he typically deals with blacks and grays or very dark blues and grays, which the new Robert Pattinson is rumored to be the blue and gray it's supposed to be more blue hmm. yeah Let's see about that that'd be cool um but i've also seen some of them that are a little bit more nolan-esque what you're looking at when you see these low saturation colors it, it tends to veer towards a fear hero and batman is the archetypal fear hero his mentality is that most human beings are going to skew towards self-interest and if we want them to be doing good or not doing evil, we have to put the fear of something into them. So he has become that. And you can see that in his color choices. They're all dark and very cynical. And yellow being his accent color, yellow is always very associated with fear, especially in the DC universe where the yellow lanterns are fueled by fear. Yep. So he is very much trying to make you scared Oh him. And that's what his color choices are trying to tell you. Well, what's your number four? Because I just did my number four. My number four is also a DC character. This is the New 52 redesign of Batgirl. This is is a design that I just, as soon as I saw it, I fell in love with it. So she's wearing this purple leather jacket with the yellow back crest on it. So you have immediately a very different take on the Bat mythos in her costume It's got a more feminine touch, but it's not a, hey, look at me, I've got boobs kind of design. She's wearing pants that are form-fitting. They're kind of like yoga pants, but they could also just as easily be gymnast pants because that's what, at least in some versions of the mythos, she was into. She was a gymnast. Right. But then she's got these, she's got pockets, she's got utility belts all over the place, but they're differently designed than Batman's and just a little bit askew. Everything she's wearing is designed to be quickly taken on, taken off. It's much more something that she would probably have in a duffel bag when she's going around somewhere. And she can just very quickly snap, put it on. Where Batman, he's got a million supercars that he's got them hiding in. Right, yeah. Yeah. That's true, she doesn't have a Batmobile. Yeah. Yeah, I actually read the run that this costume was featured in. It was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and also just the way that she looks in it. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not happy that in New Fifty Two they did away with the whole Oracle storyline, but I love the redesign for her. I actually just heard recently that they're recasting Oracle. I'm not sure if it's in the new Batman movie, but they are casting an amputee. To be oh, Oracle. oh, that's cool. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of cool. Okay, so you're number three. Okay, my number three is Cloak from Cloak and Dagger. Oh yeah, that's solid. Yeah, his uh, his cloak is actually like a portal to another dimension. Is that correct? Did I say it? Yeah. Well, it's a portal to the shadow dimension. Shadow dimension. Yeah. Which means something very specific in Marvel world. But yes, this is a very interesting outfit, in that it's literally just a black cloak. But the way that it's always drawn, you very rarely even see his body. It's just his face inside this cloak. Right, right. And sometimes not even his whole face. Yeah. 
yeah, if you guys are interested, this sounds interesting to you, definitely check out that series. It should be on Hulu. It's the series uh, Cloak and Dagger. We really enjoyed that. It was a good series. Yeah, and their variation on Cloak's cloak was also really good because they they decided, okay, well, rather than just having a plain black cloak, which works very strikingly in a comic book, they decided they were going to draw even more from their Louisiana roots and just bring in all this culture into it. The voodoo all... and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. They said it in um, New Orleans, but it's because originally in the comics it's set in New York, but they figured there's enough New York going on in the Marvel and cinematic, so might as well set it someplace. And that I thought that was a perfect fit with all of that culture to be able to have the supernatural stuff there. And so it was, it was really good. I, we highly mm-hmm. recommend it. Check yeah, the out. first season definitely was amazing. Second season, I had some difficulty with. Yeah. Okay. I, I was while we're on the cloak thing. I, one of the my thoughts for this top five was actually Doctor Strange's costume because yeah. of the fact that his cloak is a character in it. But yeah, um, yeah. So that's an honorable mention for that one. Mm-hmm. My number three is again part of the Batman family. My number three is Nightwing. And definitely not the Nightwing from the first iteration, because that one was garbage. Oh, 70s, yeah. The 70s Nightwing was total garbage. But his other iteration, where it was just a black suit with his blue emblem on it, and then what they revealed in some of the supplementary books, not actual comic books, but in supplementary books, he held all of his gear in his cuffs. So you had these almost invisible black armor cuffs that held all of his gear in it rather than around his waist, which works very well for being an acrobat, like he is. Then in some of the more recent ones, um, in Future State, which is just still running right now, he has a different version of that outfit where it's all the same colors in all the same places, but now it's raised up and it's acting like like armor. armor. It is very armored. As opposed to the way that the Bat family typically does things where they merge their ceramic plates into this almost skin tight suit. This is now a raised up panel, which actually when you think about it is really intelligent because if it gets ruined, you have to replace it somehow. Uh, Why are you going to replace an entire suit just because one of the plates got cracked? So I, I, I really like this future state version of Nightwing. And he has like his batons and like little sleeves in the like his calf area basically. Yeah shin holsters where in other other variants he's had it behind his back over his shoulders or at his waist behind him. Cool well I don't know if I have any more than what Marshall said I just I just like this simpleness simplicity of the the Nightwing costume the black and the blue. Blue being like my favorite color, so I always just like the the simplicity of it. No cape, just mm-hmm. the domino mask, which is I have to say one of my favorite costume elements yeah. of of the historical comic genre is the, the the domino mask. Which if you don't know what that is, it's a simple, just kind of like triangular or diamond shaped mask, I should say. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, let's look into what those colors do say about him because he does have this blue to his outfit. The black would suggest he's kind of going along the same lines as Batman. But this blue that he's wearing is a much brighter blue. It's a high saturation blue. And in the language of DC's colors, blue represents hope. Right. And you can also see that kind of in how Dick does a lot of his stuff. He's, he is a very hopeful person, even though he is down in the muck. Well, yeah, he's he's more positive. He jokes more. So the fact that he would have not be trying to hide everything in his costume kind of fits the fact that he's kind of a smart aleck in that way where he would just kind of like say, yeah, come get me kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So my number two is Wonder Woman. However, it's not like all the Wonder Womans. It's specifically the New 52 Jim Lee Wonder Woman. And I know a lot of people had issues with this, but I have never really been comfortable 
with the whole one piece swimsuit idea that she's been using for most of her career or the fact that she's wearing an american flag when she's not from america yeah and none of those designs really made sense to me and so the one design that we were looking because we're looking at all of these on my screen here uh she has got the red armor vest bodice kind of thing bodice thing that's kind of her signature and then she's wearing these black pants and the black pants have very small details in them. You can see that there are knee pads in them and she's wearing a navy blue biker jacket almost with some white stars on it. It it does this great thing where, yes, you can definitely tell this is Wonder Woman, but she doesn't need to show off all of her legs and all of her body. Yeah, why can't she wear pants? Exactly. Every, all the guys get to wear pants. Uh, yeah, and she, doesn't, Robin. and she doesn't have to wear a skirt either. Right. Um, girls don't necessarily have to wear skirts or show off their crotch. <laughs> they don't need to to be a superheroine. It would be acceptable if she had the skirt over the pants even, but... Yeah, yeah I, I would totally be behind that, yes. Or a tight set thing. But. Yeah. I felt like this is kind of getting rid of the last few vestiges of her origins, and her origins are pretty pretty bad i mean do, do you know that when yeah. she first debuted she had a kryptonite oh wow I did you know that. what her kryptonite was what bondage oh i know it was about bondage yeah yeah that the that guy was a, that wrote wrote was into bondage stuff like that. yeah that, that was but a really i like this move. take it's a very modern take it's a very just kind of um like a street take in a way because she's yeah. got that kind of like casual but it's like you said, all the elements are still there to show that she's one of them. Okay. So what's your number one? Number one of all time has to be Spider-Man. Like, it's the best. Ugh, I, as much as I do not read that comic and only really like either the animated or the live action versions of Spider-Man, you can't beat Steve Ditko's design on that. Okay. Costume. So you're speaking about the original Spider-Man yeah, yeah, outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I don't need any variations. Just the original. The early variants are cool like when todd mcfarland did it like mm. his stuff was cool too but the very the simplistic just the blue and the and the red and like it's it's pretty amazing how influential it was because there's a character named deathstroke and if you're in tight into titans at all you've seen him before that they even like stole spider-man for deathstroke's like mask his cowl yeah it's, his his eyes that eye design changed comics so many superheroes started using variants on that eye design ever since. Just the fact that you can have a full full face covered cowl and still have expression mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't do any any detriment to like the storytelling. It it's great and um it's it's so cool now that in the uh the movies they've been able to do the eye movement and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And they give well. you a scientific reason why it was done that yeah, way yeah, too. Yeah. It's weird that he's my number one because I don't read his books, but you can't beat that can't beat good design like that. Okay, so I'm going to agree with you and disagree with you at the exact same time because my number one is Scarlet Spider. This is Ben Riley, who is the clone of of Peter Parker after a very long series where it was, well, which one of these is the real Spider-Man? One of them is just like, you know what? I'm done with this garbage. Um, I'm just going to call myself Ben Riley, and I'm going to be my own man. And there was the first few issues where he was trying to put together his costume, and he had no idea what his new identity was going to be. He still had all of Spider-Man's powers and everything. So all he had with him was a simple, plain, red version of the Spider-Man costume with the eyes, but he didn't have any emblem, he didn't have any other details, and he had to get into this one fight, and he finally makes this decision, goes into a store where they're selling superhero paraphernalia, grabs a blue hoodie with a Spider-Man symbol on it, and rips off the sleeves, and that becomes his costume. And it's everything that I loved about the Spider-Man, the classic Spider-Man costume, but it's brought down to its core. When you look at Spider-Man, this is now a completely different color scheme than what we have been looking at with other characters. It's red, it's blue, with a little bit of black, and sometimes some white. And these high saturation colors are really speaking about a hopeful hero, like Superman, 
where their personality is saying, I believe everyone at their core is good and they're just making bad choices and they're in bad situations. They need to be shown that the world can be a better place if you just try. That if you take what you're given, you can do a lot more for the world. And you can see that. Red uh, being very passionate, very energetic at color. Blue, again, hopeful, but energetic. When you put all these colors together, it just makes you feel happy looking at some of these characters. And Scarlet Spider uses those colors to his advantage, especially, it's right there in his name. But when you look at the other elements, he's wearing his web shooters on the outside of his gauntlet. As opposed to normal Spider-Man, where he's got his gloves covering the web shooters, he's also got a utility belt that's just filled with extra cartridges. And this is very utilitarian. He's always just thinking like, okay, how can I get to my stuff faster? How can I do this a little bit better? But he's also kind of wearing his heart on his sleeve in a weird way. Like you can tell this is how his powers work now, where yeah. Spider-Man kind of hid it behind a veil of costume. Yeah, I can see the parallels between this and the Wonder Woman design mm -hmm. where it's more of a casual look because he's got like the hoodie and stuff like that. Yeah. And oh, and I also wanted to give honorable mention to the Miles Morales Yes. Costume, like with the kind of graffiti look from the movie. Uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Into the yeah. Spider-Verse, yeah. That was, really, that was great. That's a great movie. They did a really good job with um, the animation. Amazing animation and just the heart and all that stuff that they put into that movie is something else. Yeah. And actually in the comic books, they're saying that the they're bringing back this classic look for uh, Scarlet Spider. After Scarlet Spider has been wearing a frankly very creepy outfit for a little while now it's kind of like a version of silk's outfit or mm, ghost yeah. spider's outfit but uh, it's male and it's dark and he's just kind of a little bit off it'd be interesting to see what they do because from what i think we talked about this last time that spider-man movie is going to be like a kitchen sink they're really going to throw everything at it so they might be doing another Spider Verse or something. Yeah, I think because I think Spider Verse gave them permission to put a lot more in it, so we'll see what happens. Because, yeah, it sounds like it's going to be crazy. Yeah. So I mean, when we're looking at these top fives, what could you say is really the defining thing for you when you're looking at these superhero costumes? What What is it that is most meaningful to you? Well, I mean, they have to make an impression right away like it, it's got to be pretty instantaneous it's not something you have to sit around and think about because it, it's 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 comic book art it's got to make that first impression and with i think dr fade it's kind of like the mysterious nature of like okay so this isn't your normal like superman isn't wearing any mask batman you understand why he wears what he wears but this thing look uh the the helmet of dr fade looks kind of ancient so you know that there's some kind of maybe mystery historical supernatural thing going on there's no doubt when you see that that helmet that it's like that um, like i said with batman it makes sense that he needs to be hidden to accomplish his goals yeah i mean with spider-man i think i guess the biggest part of spider-man's costume is that he is completely hidden you can't know who he is again which i was actually thinking what's going to be interesting in the next spider-man movie is He's not going to work for the Daily Bugle. No. He can't because they've exposed who he is. Uh, spoilers if you haven't seen Far From Home. But they'll figure it out because Marvel knows what they're doing as far as that goes. But what, it, 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 I, what I also am liking about what she said there is, yeah, Spider-Man's costume completely covers him head to toe. You can't know who he is. And yet, by his color choices and the way that he moves and the way that he talks, you always know who he is. Like, not his identity, you know, what kind of you know he is, yeah. his heart, he, he, you know the depth of him. So it's like, it's hiding the skin on the outside to reveal the heart on the inside. Yeah, it's basically like, the hiding is, he does out of, not out of self-protection, but a protection of the, his loved ones. So mm -hmm. that says a lot about him, is that he's got to protect the ones he loves and stuff like that. So I like that just like seeing that costume says that much about him. And then, like what Marshall said, the way he is, the way he talks, the way that you can hear that as much as he's protective, he's he's still kind of like joking around and exposing his personality through what he does. Yeah. 
And that's why I say is one of my key things about a hero's design. A, it needs to reveal them. It needs to show their mentality, their choices. But also, I feel like when I'm looking at superhero costumes, it needs to be believable to me. There's a lot of these costumes out there. I'm like, nobody would actually wear that when they're going into a fight. Especially with women's outfits. Yeah, capes are questionable because your opponents can take advantage of take just taking advantage of your cape. You know, it's like that's what I liked when Incredibles when they when they were questioning the cape thing. I thought that was like, yeah, I never thought about that, but that is true. That's one of the things that I, I liked about most of the ones that you're seeing here is that you don't see any of these that are completely implausible. Um, there's always a function to everything that's there. It's a piece of gear. It's not a costume. Right. And that's that's where I feel like a superhero costume needs to be. Even Superman, the, those tidy readies. I'm sorry. I'm I was really happy to see them go in New Fifty Two. Yeah, <laughs> there's no reason for that to be there. I mean, Robin has a reason for them to be there, and Superman does not. <laughs> Maybe Ma Kemp made it for him. They had the days of the week in them. So thank you for listening to Elated Geek. Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on the things we talked about in today's podcast. Find Laney on at Zany Laney or me at One True Hazard. Uh, for updates, keep an eye on at Elated Geek on Instagram or at Elated Geek Tweets on Twitter. Or go to our website at elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd out about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes, and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send us your geek obsessions or topics that you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Or, hey, just tell us what games you're playing. And if you've got new levels that you've built in Super Mario Maker 2, go ahead and share them with us at shareadelatedgeek.com because I just got that game myself. And until next time, geek out.